The EU is undemocratic. This was one of the main arguments for Brexit back in 2016. And even today, this is still a major talking point across the European Union. And a poll from the European Union in 2021 supports this, as 52% of Europeans feel that their voices do not count in the EU. But is the EU really undemocratic, or is this all just noise and EU bashing? To answer this question, the video will be split into three parts. Firstly, how are the EU institutions voted into power? Secondly, what are the EU institutions responsible for? And thirdly, where are the democratic deficiencies? To form a democratic union of nations, such as the EU, there are two options. Firstly, there is the intergovernmental option, where the citizens of the nations vote for national politicians who then discuss, negotiate, and make decisions for the union together. Secondly, there is a supranational variant, where the citizens of the nations vote for politicians of an independent institution that can then make decisions across the union. It would have been too simple for the EU to adopt just one of these models. Instead, the EU is a mixture of both. So how does this work? Let's imagine a voter from Germany, Christina. She has a national vote every four years and a European vote every five years. Her European vote goes directly towards the European Parliament, an independent EU institution. Her national vote goes towards one of the German parties, for example, the SPD with Olaf Scholz. The SPD is then responsible for sending the head of state to the European Council and relevant ministers to the Council of the European Union. The heads of state in the European Council determine a candidate for the European Commission presidency, who then needs to be approved by the EU Parliament. So Christina is directly responsible for the European Parliament and the two councils by simply voting in the German election and the EU election. As for the Commission, Christina only has an indirect vote here, as the heads of state choose the candidate and the Parliament approves. Before looking at the democratic deficiencies, it is important to understand what these institutions do, especially in terms of creating new European laws. In a nutshell, the European Commission acts like the executive branch of the EU and is responsible for drafting, enforcing, and monitoring EU laws. But it does not pass laws. This responsibility lies with the Parliament and the Council of the European Union, who negotiate, amend, and adopt new laws. And then there's a European Council, who brings together EU leaders to set the EU's political agenda. It acts like a collective presidency. There are another three EU institutions that we will not go into today. And please be aware that I'm oversimplifying the EU political landscape to make it more understandable. Please see my sources for more information. Now to the third part of the video. What are the democratic deficiencies? When people talk about unelected EU bureaucrats, they normally point to the European Commission. As shown earlier, it is the only institution that citizens don't directly vote for. Some argue that it would be more democratic if the president of the commission would be directly voted on by the people. Next, there's the issue that only the European Commission can initiate new laws. The Parliament and the Council may recommend legislation, but this is not legally binding for the commission. Then there's the issue of low voter turnout which some argue is weakening the EU Parliament's democratic legitimacy. For instance, in 2014, only 42% of Europeans decided to vote, the lowest number ever, but this has since increased back to above 50% in 2019. Next, there's the case of unequal representation in the European Parliament. Germany, the most populous EU country, has 96 MEPs, meaning that one MEP represents around 865,000 German citizens. And Malta, the least populous country, has six MEPs, meaning that one MEP represents about 82,000 citizens. This means that Malta is more strongly represented by a factor of 10, which is uncommon for a parliament. Some of the more populous countries argue that this isn't fair representation. So, back to the original question. Is the EU undemocratic? Well, no. It definitely isn't, as every EU institution is either directly or indirectly related to your vote. The Brexit debate was quite amusing. Some had a preference for other international organizations, such as the WTO, the Commonwealth, or NATO. In terms of democracy, these are far less democratic, as I for one can't remember the last time I was able to vote for the WTO Director General. Not to mention British politics, with the House of Lords and the first-past-the-post system. Not exactly the prime example for pure democracy. 
Granted, the EU does have more power than most other international organizations. So could the EU be more democratic? Yes, it definitely could. For instance, the European Commission could be voted upon by the EU electorate. And even more power can be given to the EU Parliament. And this has already happened. Since the Lisbon Treaty in 2007, the European Parliament has evolved from a consultative assembly to a co-legislator with fundamental financial, legislative and supervisory powers. But even more power to the Parliament could potentially mean less power to the EU member states. Currently, the member states hold most of the power, and the EU needs to decide what the EU should become. And that is what my next videos are about. What model can the EU develop into? Back to an intergovernmental model, or more integration towards a federation or a confederation? For instance, the US model, with one elected president, or rather a Swiss model, where there are seven heads of state. And then the final video of the series will evaluate the benefits and drawbacks of a more federal Europe, and whether this is likely to happen. So if you're interested in these topics, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified. And please write in the comments what you think. Is the EU democratic? What changes would you like to see?